Hi, welcome to my show. My guest today is Kai Man. And I met Kai in, uh, we're trying to determine, I think it's around 2014, 2013, at the National Association of Black Journalists uh, conference, I think it was. Um, and about a, a year later, she contacted me and um, she interviewed me for her show, which is uh, Conversations with Kai. Um, so welcome to my show. Now I'm having you as my guest. Thank you. <laughs> How fun is this? Yes. <laughs> um, so it's a wonderful way to connect mm -hmm. with friends, I think. Um, I, I learned something new about you today. You have a very interesting name that only today I started learning the meaning of it. You want to share that a little bit, what you were telling me earlier? Sure. Um, so Kai um, means, there's a couple different meanings. It just depends on where you're from. Um, in Yoruba, it means love. In Welsh, it means willow tree. In Hawaiian, it means deep ocean or deep sea. So, yeah. So, all the descriptions are very beautiful. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, another thing I, I didn't know about you is that you are an author of four books. Yes. Um, my idea of you is mostly because I see you on, on media and all the interviews that you do, but you have authored four books, mm -hmm. and then you are coming out with your fifth book on yes. July 11th. Mm -hmm. Please tell us a little bit about that. Okay. Um, so I've been writing books probably since 2011. If I really want to start um, the actual writing process began long before that. Mm -hmm. um, but I started with my first book, which was 30 Day Notice. And then my second book came out a couple years later, and that was Abandoned Property. Now, I've also done two poetry books. Now, this time, I'm actually... Um, I've written a book called Living on Lafayette Street. And Living on Lafayette Street is a book about um, growing up on Lafayette Street. Um, I'm originally from Fort Myers, Florida. And so I have the street that everybody that I grew up with, there's a synergy that happened on my street. Um, there's some things, experiences that happened on my street. And so I have been trying to write this book actually for the past maybe since probably 2015, to be honest with you. And there was a time, a period that I kind of stopped because I felt like originally it was going to be a poetry book. I ended up changing it into a um, biography sort of. Is it like so more like, like a memoir type of yeah, biography? Yeah, it's a memoir. Yes. And so what happened is um, I've since then I've had some major things that have happened. Of course, my mother passed away in 2010. So I wanted to make it like an ode to her. Then I've had I've lost my sister since then. Oh, I'm sorry um, to hear that. I didn't know about that either. Yeah, I lost my sister last year. Um, and then this year has been like a really kind of traumatic crazy kind of year as well where we've been dealing with some issues with my father but what I realized living on Lafayette Street was not, it wasn't finished that's why I could not finish this book it's because there were so many pieces that needed to be um, kind of you know fleshed out and having this experience with my father this year was just what I needed it's just mm. what I needed yeah um, well that's the story of most writers lives is that life gets in the way but what actually happens is that life gives us a more enriching experience yes, that we then pour into our books and our stories yes, yeah so um but you've uh, been quite productive nonetheless <laughs> yes, yeah. um so you told me about this uh it's called uh, i'm gonna try to pronounce it i iology okay iology yes. Inc. <laughs> tell me about that because i know you know this is what i know about you that everything that you do, whether it's your books or your show or anything else, you know, it all, all comes from a place of love and that you have um, strong faith mm -hmm. and that you are really d dedicated to improving and empowering and, and, and inspiring others. Mm -hmm. um, so I know that much about you. <laughs> <laughs> How does this fit into all of that? Sure. Well, um, as you, you know, spoke, so lovingly, thank mm -hmm. you, that my life has been a life of transformation. It's been a life of wanting to share that transformation, healing, growing, evolving with others, um, and kind of seeking the same from others as well. And that's what we got with the conversations with Kai Man Show, was that we wanted to make sure that we were not only just talking about transformation, but we were giving people that the insight to how to transform. Um, and what happened with now, 
I'm sorry, what was the question? <laughs> oh, I was saying that how is ILG right Iology. associated with everything that you're doing because exactly. it all comes from that same place exactly. and with this with the intention of helping others somehow, right inspiring. And Iology them. Inc. is a life branding um, company. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we work with people from the inside out. So rather than just telling them who they are, we go through this process of um, really going through their history, um, what their passion has been up until this particular point. I'm um, talking about some of the things that have happened in their lives and how we can utilize that information to help brand them. And so our branding is very unique. It's We have a um, life strategist that um, works with each one of the clients first. Um, she makes sure that each one of the clients are dealt with uniquely and that their individual stories come out um, and that they're fleshed out appropriately and that they're ready for transformation, that they're ready to be branded. Because a lot of times we have these ideas of who we want to be and that's really not normally what we want to be or who we want to be. It's only because we've seen somebody else do it. I was going to say, yeah. Well, that's <laughs> what happens a lot of times and when people trying to find their niche, they're kind of looking and trying to imitate somebody else. And exactly. that takes away from the, their authenticity. Right. Um, but working with them one-on-one, -on -one, you're – not only are they kind of, you're helping them brand what they're good at, but you're really transform. They're getting transformed in the process. Right. They're getting to know themselves. Um, I love how you said with regards to connecting them to their history, mm -hmm. going back that far. Sometimes people don't spend all that time on themselves mm -hmm. because there's so much noise going on in the world. As you might, you know, there's a lot of noise, and that distracts us from knowing who we are, uh, of what we want to be. So when you get this kind of personalized attention. I'm sure it's very transformational for, with the people that you're working with. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, it is. A lot of times, too, when we think of spirituality, we think of um, transformation. We think of all these different things. We we think of it um, only in, in maybe so to speak as a box. We don't understand the components of what it is. And it starts from our childhood. Many of us have had so many issues that have happened in our childhood that we have not resolved in our adulthood. And so these things kind of play out in our lives. We wonder at some points in our lives why we're stuck, why we can't move past a certain area. It's because of something that happened when we were, you know, children. And those things have to be brought out. They have to be healed. These are things that have to be done before you can even move into those spaces that you need to move oh, into. I totally believe in that. I mean, I went through that whole thing as um, in the mystical school that I got involved in. It was all because my teacher, Lynn V. Andrews, she was able to tap into something that I um, didn't know how, you know, how much of an impression it had left on my life mm -hmm. um, an incident that happened when I was in Iraq and I was only like seven or eight years old you know in school um, and the political tension that was taking place I didn't know how much of an impression it left on my literary voice mm -hmm. how it had created a fear that really did not allow me to express myself as an author and I I didn't know how to connect the dots because most people that I spoke to didn't give it, you know, a second thought. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, oh, well, the teacher hit me because of such and such. And it was just like, oh, well, you know, we have worse stories. Than that. <laughs> but it was. But if you were to dissect the story mm -hmm. and see, oh, but this left an impression on you right. that made you not be able to express who you really are in fear of, um, you know, that you will be reprimanded, mm -hmm. for instance. And so once that was tapped into and it took a while to heal, then suddenly I found myself being very productive as an author. Suddenly I was able to write the books that I was like, what's really stopping me? Um, and then trying to get all these how-to books. How-to books are not going to solve that story that's blocking you, right. as you probably know when right. you work with people. Yes, most definitely. That yes. is the key. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I have a little video I'd like to show of you so people can kind of get an, an idea <laughs> why you're as wonderful as you are. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I've always been on this path. It was predestined, held in the stars at the time of my birth. I honestly believe that. I was a spiritual kid, always. Let me try again. I've <laughs> always been on this path. It was predestined, held in the stars at the time of my birth. I honestly believe that. I was a spiritual kid, always seeking spiritual knowledge and wisdom. At a young age, I felt the calling or this pulling of something from within. I can remember being about nine or 10 and feeling that calling and 
walking up to the front of the church and later getting baptized. I read my Bible a lot as a kid on my own. I'm not sure if I wanted to know what I was getting myself into or just the rules and the truth, probably the latter, but the seeking and this yearning for spiritual awareness and knowledge, it grew into a journey of self-love, constant change and transformation. I consistently studied myself and made adjustments as I became aware. Then there was this urge to help others, so I began to study others I thought that were like me. I wanted to create a way that spiritual wisdom of change and transformation could help to enlighten others on the same path but had not yet really stepped on the road. Everything I have done was to help others, from writing books to Facebook and Instagram posts to blogging, creating a network, web series, and documentaries. It's all been about transformation in one form or another. It's just who I am. It's who I was destined to be. That was beautiful. Thank you. That was that when I watched that. I, you know, sometimes you don't know the people that you work with, but um, you get that vibe from you, mm -hmm. and then that makes sense. When I was watching all of that, it was very touching. Thank you. Thank yes. You. Um, there's also another video um, that I and it's more talks about the your show, mm -hmm. you know, um, the purpose behind your show and everything like that. So I'm gonna play that as well. Okay. Okay. I've been blessed to be able to sit down and talk with some amazing people. People who are authors, community leaders, spiritual leaders, activists, mothers, people who have had some type of transformation that has happened in their lives and that they've been able to not only survive, but to thrive. And for me, I think that the things that we go through in life are gifts to us. Only if we look at it that way. The, the trauma, the um, trials, those things I do believe are, I would say, handpicked for us. You know, some of the things that we go through, you know, we bring on ourselves, but some of the things that you experience in life just because are some things that help you to move into different spaces, um, different levels, and different dimensions in life. And had not those trials, those tribulations, those tragedies or traumas happened, you would not be in the space that you're in right now. It has been an opportunity, a gift, so to speak, to propel you into a different realm of life. And if you choose to see it that way, it'll catapult you into the place that you ultimately want to be in. But you have to see it that way. And a lot of people don't. People um, look at it and, and blame something or someone for it happening. And instead of blaming or placing blame, we should look at it differently. What is this thing or what is this trial, this tribulation, what is it teaching me? What? Why did it happen in my life? Sometimes the things that happen to us, and of course we, you know, sometimes don't want those things to have happened to us, and we most definitely don't wish them on other people as well. But when you ask yourself, why me? You can figure, because you might be the person that is the stronger out of a number of people that it could have happened to, that you were the person who would take it and use it for what it was worth so that you may be able to help somebody else be able to um, grow through the same scenario or maybe something similar. But it's up to us to take those experiences that we learn or that we go through and learn from them. It's up to us to choose to step higher than the things that we have gone through. And if we choose to do so, we impact the lives of other people who are around us. People who maybe there is nothing going on in their lives at this particular moment, but to see us go through it and how we handle it and how we move past it gives them the inspiration to do whatever it is that they might need to do in the upcoming future because they can look at our lives and say, well, Kai did it, so can I. What will you choose to 
allow to catapult you into a different space and be able to use that to catapult somebody else into a, a new space, a different space, a higher space. What will you do? How will you inspire or impact someone's life? How will you choose your story to impact someone's life, to save them, to help heal them, to help transform them? Will you tell your story? Very beautiful. Again, I didn't even realize I'd seen, I watched it, but I was uh, multitasking as I was watching <laughs> it. So I didn't realize that I was in that. And it brought good memories. I remember when you, because you came to my home mm -hmm. at that time, and this was in 2015, and um, your mind, you know, calculates the years like, wow, you know, and um, everything you said is so true is that when you have that kind of attitude, you see how much growth has happened since then mm -hmm. and how you um, make decisions with the with the idea that you want to live a meaningful and purposeful life. Mm -hmm. It's not just about acquiring, but just the fact that you care to live that kind of a lifestyle. Naturally, there's a growth in it. There's no way not to grow with it, regardless of the speed or anything else, but just to have that kind of meaningful life where you're touching people's lives hearts as you're doing your own thing and it kind of becomes one and the same you mm -hmm. know your work and everything um gets intermingled that's the fun part about it i feel like that's what you do yes um it, it is what i strive to do on everything that i do um the goal is to consistently grow and grow in such a way that um enlist profound change you know within myself first um, and then in others, because a lot of times we think we're, we're out there to help others, but we don't realize that our lives are the examples for others. So we're like mirrors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we mirror each other. Yeah, exactly. And so for me, that that whole um, always continuing and looking and striving to grow spiritually, mentally, physically, um, every way that I can grow. It is something that is innate within me. It's something that has always literally just been there within me. And I know that other people have that same thing too. A lot of times we don't know how to grow. We don't know what are the steps. And there's, you know, no formula for, you know, everyone. We don't have a, you know, a specific formula that's going to work for me, that's going to work for you. You know, our lives, the experiences that we have kind of dictate that. So we kind of have to do what works best for us. But we do have to look at those things we have to pick up pick up some of the the um experiences that we have that may seem negative i don't like to think of things in the in the terms of negative negativity because i believe that everything works for you everything works for you no matter what it is you just have to learn how to use it as a gift and to grow forward with it and so a lot of people have been afraid to just lift up the covers just a little bit and kind of look under there and kind of sweep out and kind of see what's there so that we can begin to heal those areas cuz when we don't we kind of trip over those things and we don't mm -hmm. grow like we should. And then we pick up more residue and mm -hmm. more, and it just keeps stacking up. Then it's, exactly. it's, it's more scarier to even look under the cover yeah. because you don't want to even see. Um, but if you were to give, you know, like uh, one tool that somebody can start to do at home, um, something very practical that maybe has helped you before, um, somebody that's at home, regardless of whether this would, this is a um, something that they would use for their business or just for their own growth, their mm -hmm. own personal growth. Um, someone might who might be experiencing depression or whatever it may be. If there's one tool that maybe worked for you or you've seen it work on others that somebody can do right now at home, what would that be if you could think of something? Writing. Writing. Yep. And if you're not a writer um, on your cell phone, there is a recorder. Mm -hmm. Record. Um, what I what I found is. Start from the beginning. Whatever it is that you remember from whatever age that you can remember, start writing about that every night. You know, just once a day, just grab a notebook and a pen and 
begin to write about everything that you remember that happened to you because what happens is you begin this process of um, bringing to the surface some of those things that you probably had shoved down or some things that you just kind of like kept pushing to the background um, and not really realizing that those things are kind of actually programming everything that you do from this particular point you're programmed from all of those things that have happened you've learned to duck and dodge and kind of move along you know as things are happening from whatever has happened you yeah. just keep doing that so the one tool that I would say is to write and if you're not a writer again just Verbally, Take it release, wrong, verbally it, right. release it. There has to be some type of release, either written or verbal. Yeah, I totally, that's a great advice. And I often, you know, during in my workshops and such, I bring this up a lot. That has changed my life quite a bit. But you, like you said, you don't have to be a writer for right. it to make that kind of an impact. It's just, for, in my case, that was part of not only of the healing, but that's part of my calling mm -hmm. is to be a writer. Mm -hmm. um, but, but you can say in any kind of way, like you said, you can pick up the phone and just release your story. Uh, because something happens in the process of releasing it, of saying it we can become then the observant mm -hmm. rather than get stuck because when it's stuck in our head it just eats up at us and eats up and then once we verbalize it i think we can then maybe be more objective mm -hmm. um and there's something that also happens when we are the ones that are doing it between us and the paper or us and the recorder is that the only thing that's within us within our uh, sphere is God mm -hmm. okay so you don't need anybody's approval or something there's you're allowing it and wherever that takes you not mm -hmm. that it doesn't help to talk or have sessions and all this kind of stuff with with experts um, I think that's very important as mm -hmm. well but at the end of the day there's just just the sacred act of just being with yourself mm -hmm. and that the tool of writing or to, of talking and you just have God as your witness exactly. about all of what's happening. Um, so I've, I've too have found this uh, a good way to maybe recognize how I'm self-sabotaging my own mm -hmm. way and not blaming others. You know, there's a lot of times we think somebody else is preventing us or blocking this or getting in our way. But somehow when we write it down, when we ver verbalize it, we're like, oh, we're self-sabotaging mm -hmm. ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And on top of that, too, when we think about um, the programs that have been kind of placed into our lives since we were children, certain things that we have been told over and over and over again that may not have been part of who we came here to be, but these were kind of distractions. So they kind of programmed us to believe certain things about ourselves. So when there's time for us to step in, up into different roles, those programs or those things that are running in the background are those things that kind of sabotage us or hinder us from doing, you know, what it is that it's we like need to so do. It's like so automatic. Automatic. The, yeah. It's automatic. And it's so like we breathing. play, um, you know, and this goes even because I know, given the culture that I come from, um, it creates the same story you get stuck in the same story doing the same thing expecting different results mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah i can tell you this uh, it's, it's funny i realized this um, myself one day i have been telling the same story all the time and then i went and i said what is this freaking story <laughs> so mm -hmm. i began to really write the story down and the thing about it is when you when you begin to write things down and you say well did it really happen like that you know did it you know as years go on, you kind of add something to it. And when you really look at it, it wasn't even that bad. It wasn't even what was really going on. It's like on. your point of view changes. <laughs> it changes yes. drastically. Yes. yes. Yeah. And um, and like I said, there are some stories that are attached to communities. Mm -hmm. For instance, myself as a woman from a m Middle Eastern country, there's a story attached to my culture and my heritage. There's a story for the African-American community. Yes. Um, what happens is if we keep certain stories alive, we will repeat them. And that's what I have noticed in you and others um, like you is that you have decided to change that story and not be a victim of that story. Mm -hmm. uh, because it, honestly, if we keep re repeating it and saying how we were oppressed and we were suppressed and we were this and we were that, it's, it's one thing to recognize it because it's necessary for the healing part. Right. It's not like you're trying to deny your experience, no, because then you're like faking it. Right. But once you recognize it, you have to understand to release it and then say, okay, 
how am I going to change this? Right. How am I going to enter a new story so that for the next generation, they will have a different story to share with people. They're not going to keep repeating that same story over and over again. Exactly. Yeah. I have this saying that, um, you know, really thank God for the people who are um, activists, um, those people who activate um, new changes and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. But then I believe, too, there is a, a responsibility that we have to begin to start teaching um, compassion and humanity. And once we begin to do that, there's no need to advocate for anything. And so it's all about teaching something new. We keep doing the same things over and over and over again. What is, the, what's the answer? And to be, to me, that's the answer, you know. You see, when I interview people that I think I know, I start, I, I probably that's where the connection happened to begin with. But everything that you just said, this is exactly how I feel, is that when we make that in change within us, mm -hmm. then it might seem a slower process, but I feel like it's a more um, long-lasting process yes, it because it starts trickling into, first it starts with yourself, mm -hmm. then the people immediate to you who you love and your families and right. then your community and then it goes and then there's a ripple effect. And if we just be patient enough just to mirror mm -hmm. the kind of change that we want, there's a lot of power in that that That's sometimes true. it's hard to express because people can't see it, but it works. It does. It does. It really yeah. does. It does. It, it, it works. And it, it also, it's a part of um, how things begin to change, you know, for um, generations. Mm -hmm. It's that, that whole process of a few people starting it and maybe um, them being looked at as different or whatever the case may be. Yes. There's a process of it. And then yes. individual, individual people begin to um, come collaborate on and yes. come on board. Yes. And then it begins to be a whole generation of people. So Yes. And we carry and on. It's, and it, it's fun doing it this way. It is. There, it, it, there is it's an, tough, but it, it's fun. It's tough, yes, because <laughs> but the inner channel challenge is within mm -hmm. um there is a challenge within that is you you know everybody experience it whether you're an activist or not you're still going to have the challenge exactly. within but when you some of the things that you do where it's not maybe on a physical plane mm -hmm. it's it's mm -hmm. you people don't see it yes. and so sometimes you kind of have to just hold your breath and just kind of pray yourself out mm -hmm. <laughs> through <Yes>, it. Definitely. <laughs> you yes. know, so, but um, I really appreciate you coming on this show because I just, I, I think you are one of the people, you know, I, as I mentioned oftentimes is that I created this show is to create that alternative rather than I saw what was happening, um, you know, after 2016 and there was so much seemed like so much drama and although I I like drama because it's fun <laughs> you know I'm from the Middle East so I get off on drama but it was a little bit too much for me and I said well um instead of kind of complaining about what's going on what can I do that would portray what I want to see mm -hmm. and so I created this show to do that mm -hmm. and you know what it gives me so much peace and it highlights the people that I feel are not being highlighted but should be mm -hmm. but rather than getting upset that they're not being highlighted here i am <laughs> you know? well, thank you <laughs> so thank you for coming on oh, my show uh, i'm sure i'll have you, you again me. good luck on your book again thank um you. and people can you know i've put up your website and stuff they can check out your website because your book again um uh, what living was on living Lafayette yeah Street. it's coming out july, july 11th, 11th. Yeah. everybody look for it thank you and uh, god bless Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you again for having me. I really appreciate it. It was my pleasure. Peace, Peace. and blessings.